it's it's the stitches. We're at a slightly different angle today. If you can't tell, I'm channeling my inner lovely lords. Today we are going to react to a Lolita documentary that came out when I was in high school. This is from like 2009, 2010 I want to say, but I'm pretty sure it was released in 2009, which would make this 10 years old. So I thought that this would just be really fun because 2009 is when I first got into I was super into it in high school and then I stopped for a bit and then I very recently came back to it So this is just gonna be a fun little experience to show with you guys. I do not have cute headphones But I do have paint splatter ones Yes, open with that Wikipedia quote Interesting. I thought they were they worked for an ice cream place. The one girl that walked by with the ice cream. It takes its roots from the Victorian era and the Rococo period of France. Lily. Okay, can we talk about Victoria's skirt? I totally forgot about this brand. I was obsessed. It was a little tiny brand. It was on Etsy. I totally forget what it was called, but they, all of their stuff was unicorns. And they had this print. It's so blown out and washed out, but she's wearing the yellow colorway. I'll try to find it, but it was. It is one of my favorite books. Me too. Do we, do we have to bring up the book? Do we? Really? I, f I thought it was very beautiful and very interesting, but it is completely unrelated to the fashion. The American Lolita is very bound by rules. <laughs> the American Lolita is very bound by rules, she says. And she's not even wearing a blouse. <laughs> Whereas in Japan, it's sort of something to experiment with. Um, they take a lot of liberties with the fashion and they do what they want with it. It's not necessarily as much of a lifestyle from what I've seen. Japanese Lolitas have it easy. <laughs> they don't label like we do. But the reason we label is we're trying to keep the style pure instead of mutating into something and they're not worried about that, which is very freeing. Do Lolitas still carry around parasols? Is that still a thing? Cause I tried to find one secondhand, and I didn't see them anywhere. Like, is parasol still a thing? Because everybody had one in 2009. Everybody. My philosophy on Lolita is, well, personally, I wear Lolita because I think the dresses are pretty. I don't wear it because it changes me when I put it on, you know, I don't wear it because I like the rules that come with it or for attention necessarily or anything like that. Um, I like the dresses, they look pretty. I always feel like there's so much beauty in the world and I feel like I sort of can't I'm observing it, but I'm not part of it. And I'm not, when I wear Lolita, I feel like I'm channeling all of the beauty in the universe. And I feel, it really feels like this is what I was created to look like. This is how my soul was formed. I was formed in the uterus with a bow on my head. <laughs> She's wearing the unicorn skirt again. I started sewing because of Lolita, because I couldn't afford to spend $300 on a dress, you know, whenever I wanted one, or couldn't find the exact dress that I had in my mind, so I started sewing to make my own stuff, um, and obviously that led to me opening my business. That's like literally me. When I first got into Lolita, and even now, like, all of my stuff was handmade back then. I feel like handmade just used to be so much more common than it is now. 
because obviously we couldn't get our hands on brand very easily. When I first got into Lolita and when this documentary came out, like the only brand that shipped overseas was Metamorphose. And that's it. I am a part of the generation that had to order Baby the Stars Shine Bright via email over PayPal to the San Francisco store when it first opened up. Is she? I've been busy the past six months, which means I've been extremely ill. And when I had nothing else left, I knew that I could find solace in something beautiful as a small distraction for just a little while, and I would never give that up for anything. We have this deep sense that needs beautiful things mm -hmm. to be happy. It's mm -hmm. almost like um, how seasonal affective disorder needs sunlight, mm -hmm. because if you don't have these things, you become depressed. Mm -hmm. And that's very important that we have these things. It's honestly an addiction. Mm -hmm. yes. If you are, if you don't get it, I am. You can. I'm not as enamored with it as you are. Oh, oh is Amelia, is that still a thing? Do people still call it that? That was basically, I guess, what they called Sweet Lolita in Japan. I guess. Like, there would be the hardcore Lolitas that would call Sweet Lolita Emmett Lolita, and it would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> what were we doing in 2009? What's going on? Negative attention, but I always get mostly positive attention. How does she do it? Also got I don't know. Positive. Everywhere I go, <laughs> Julia always gets hit on. <laughs> well, other people think that, you're, that Lolitas are prostitutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do... <laughs> <laughs> Why do I give off that impression? Yeah. Fashion show. Fashion Lolita has show. a lot of rules. There's even a Lolita handbook on the internet outlining what you should wear and how. Of course you can Shout out to Lolita handbook, confusing Lolita since 2006. Change the rules and bend them. You don't have to follow them at all. I mean, <laughs> it's what you wear, but um, generally. There's a lot of guidelines as to what you need to wear, like, for your whole ensemble, like, socks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we get a rewind on that shot of Victoria totally stumbling? Socks. Knee-high socks, generally. Ankle socks aren't okay. Shoes, headwear, either, like, a bow or, like, a, some other headdress or flowers. Sweet Lolita has a theme of cakes and strawberries and fruit and just very very cute things so this skirt really exemplifies that um i don't know how well you can see it but the entire bottom of the skirt is all different sweets based on strawberries so this red dress is also off brand it's from the chinese brand anna house based out of hong kong anna house still exists and they have like the same designs that they did back in the day it's like the same brand <laughs> Like, it was exactly the same in 2009 as it is literally right now on the website. <laughs> it's more of a classic Lolita piece, which means that instead of being very childish and cutesy, it's more refined, a little bit more mature and grown up, but still with a childish air to it. So this is also by Angelic Pretty. You can see that these two have a lot in common. The fact that they both have um, deeply detailed prints, and they both share this lace which they make special for every dress that they put together. You can see that it has tiny carousel ponies and AP for angelic pretty and this is this probably is one of the most expensive dresses I owned. Let's say a basic like price that. rundown. I probably got the socks for $40, um, the shoes were $60, $100 for the skirt, $100 for one of my petticoats, $18 for the other. Um, 130 for the blouse and 30 for the bustier. Oh, now we get another fashion show. This is basically just like several fashion shows and like tea parties and like, yeah, we wear a little bit. I'm pretty sure that this is copyrighted music, so let's just play something silly in the background.
is that what are we doing? What was 2009? Hey! These are all the same dresses that they had in the other portion. <laughs> I do like that nightgown, like 10 out of 10, would buy. Probably wouldn't actually sleep in, but would buy. Finish this sentence. Lolita is about... Me. Thank you, me too. Exactly, Lolita is about <laughs> <Myself>. loving yourself. <laughs> documentary about Lolita from 10 years ago. Um, yeah, I will leave a link to the full documentary in the description because there are some pieces I left out. Um, obviously this is a 15 minute documentary and I don't want my video to be super long. I hope everybody has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye!